Good morning. We are gathered as the people of Fieldburg Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Eric Swanson. This Sunday is Christ the King Sunday. We celebrate that we are followers of Christ, who is our King, and he is a King that looks different from the kings and the powerful ones of this world. This is Christ, the one who comes down on earth to live among us as God in the flesh, but one who doesn't put on power or put on arrogance, but comes as a humble servant, loving, forgiving, restoring, and bringing us back into relationship with God. So this is a Sunday in the church year dedicated to celebrating Christ the King. A couple of other announcements um, as we prepare ourselves for worship. Please remember that uh, this evening on the 20th, we will have a community Thanksgiving worship service. It will be at 6.30 in the evening. It will be at Trinity United Methodist Church here in Huxley. And it is for all the Christians in our area who would like to gather, give thanks to God, and, and share in worship as a community. So again, 6.30 at the Trinity United Methodist Church. And then also because of the Thanksgiving week and uh, events coming up, we will not have any Wednesday evening activities here at church this week. So uh, on the 23rd, there will not be confirmation or choir or bell choir. There's no Wednesday night meal. So none of those things are happening this week. And our food pantry will have some additional hours on Wednesday. So the food pantry will be open Wednesday morning from 10 o'clock to 11 and they will still be open Wednesday evening, six o'clock to 7 p.m., so two times on Wednesday. So please remember those. And also, please continue to strengthen and build up our ministry. Give generously to support Fieldburg Lutheran Church so that we can continue to do great things like our food pantry and these online worship services, Sunday morning gatherings, and our confirmation ministry, and so many others. We need the gifts that you offer so that we can continue to do this ministry that we do in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for all of that. And now, welcome to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who restores us through Jesus Christ, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy and love, we confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbors. We have ignored voices that call for your justice. We have failed to live as witnesses to your righteousness. We have spoken words and taken actions that disrupt your beloved community. We truly repent of the things we have done and things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Restore our troubled spirits so that we may live in newness of life and build up the body of Christ. Amen. People of God, rejoice and be glad. God hears the prayers of all who cry out, and God restores us to life through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God, our true life, to serve you is freedom, and to know you is unending joy. We worship you. We glorify you. We give thanks to you for your great glory. Abide with us. Reign in us and make this world into a fit habitation for your divine majesty. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. first reading for this Sunday comes from the Old Testament prophet Jeremiah. It, it speaks of leaders who are disrupting God's people. They're scattering and destroying God's people, and God's kind of fed up with these leaders who don't shepherd the people as God wants them cared for. So God, speaking through the prophet, says, I'm going to raise up new shepherds. I am going to raise up leaders who come out of this line of David, a righteous branch from the tree of David, who will guide my people and, and hold them, care for them, and lift them up so that the people can find hope and restoration. As we in the Christian world read these Old Testament stories and we think and hear about Jesus coming into the world, we hear in God's promise a look or, or a vision that points ahead to Jesus Christ. We hear from the prophet Jeremiah. From the 23rd chapter of Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, 
Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my sheep. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Our second reading comes from Paul's letter to the Colossians or the people of Colossae. Um, in this letter, Paul is exhorting or, or encouraging this early Christian community to take their strength or their their understanding of strength in this world from from the example or from the ways of Jesus Christ different from leaders of this world or different from the powers of this world they are instead to look at the way of Jesus Christ Paul says that Jesus is the image of the invisible God if you want to know what God is like you look at Jesus who is God in the flesh and, and he uses this great phrase, the firstborn of all creation. He is the first one raised up. And also as you look at Jesus, you are seeing the ways of God. So in all the things that Jesus does, in the forgiving, the inviting, the healing, the restoring and renewing, dying and rising up again, all of that, it's not just because Jesus was launching off on some path of his own. But the ways of Jesus are the ways of God. We hear from Paul's letter to the Colossians. From the first chapter of Colossians. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of the cross. The Word of the Lord. Good morning, Fieldberg friends. Today is Christ the King Sunday, and I have a crown and a robe on. But our King, Jesus, he didn't need these things. He didn't need a robe. He didn't need a crown. And he didn't need a big castle. Jesus came 
so that he could teach us and heal us and share with us. And he came to love us. So can you guys do this with me? Can you? Jesus came to love us. He came to share with us. And he came to welcome us. And maybe you at home can do it with me too. He came to love with us. He came to share with us. And he came to welcome us. That's our Jesus. Simple. He doesn't need a crown or a robe and, and all that fancy stuff. Should we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to teach us to love and to care for others. And all God's people say, Amen. On this Christ the King Sunday, our Gospel reading is perhaps one that might be considered a somewhat unexpected Gospel text. The story for Christ the King is the story of Christ's crucifixion on the cross. There where Christ is dying, we meet the image of our King, the one who comes as God in the flesh and yet the one who is rejected by the world. And in this story, we are still getting a picture, uh, a glimpse of what it is to worship this one, what it is that Christ is our King. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders, they scoffed at Jesus, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Once somebody told me that when they turned 40, they started looking for pennies that were older than they were. Like for us now in 2022, it would be looking for any pennies that were made in 1982 or before. At first, this person thought this was going to be kind of challenging. They thought most of the older pennies would by now be sitting in somebody's penny jar collecting dust on a shelf. But once they started looking, once they started paying attention to those pennies and looking at them more closely, they found out there were lots of 40-year-old pennies still circulating out there. When you look for something, you start to see it. When we gather on Wednesday nights here at church, and we have our, our shorter, casual worship service. One of the things we do is we ask everyone gathered for our little worship service, where have you seen God? At first, it was a little difficult for those gathered. They weren't accustomed to looking for God. But when you start looking, 
when you start paying attention to God at work in the world, you start to see things. Sure, those young people weren't accustomed to looking for God at first, but we've been practicing it now for several weeks. And God, God has been much more visible here lately. The kids have seen God. They saw God one Wednesday evening when we went down and packed those dry ingredients into bags of meals uh, for Meals from the Heartland. They realized that in working together and in doing something together, they saw God working in us and caring for hungry people. They saw God when we went over and harvested peppers and watermelons at Iowa Gardening for Good. They saw that God works through farmers and volunteers. God works through school kids and church groups and all kinds of groups that come and help out and put their labor to work because God works in us and through us to bring help and to bring hope to the world. Our young people have seen God when someone stops what they're doing and interrupts their own activities to go do something, to just do a favor, just because they want to help somebody else. I got to see God this week. This week, our brother in faith, Homer Kelsom, died on Tuesday evening. I gathered with Kay and other family members. There was grieving and there was also remembering. They took delight in recalling and sharing stories about the great person that God has created him to be. So together we recalled family stories and joyful events that they shared together and the love that existed between them. On Saturday morning, we gathered for his funeral and in song and in scripture and in proclamation and in prayer, we were bold together. We were bold enough to believe and to say that death is not the end. We could entrust Homer into the hands of God who will make us alive again. That boldness, that confidence, that kind of faith, it is the action of God's Holy Spirit working in us, moving in us to build hope and trust and belief in God's promise of new life. In all of these stories, in feeding, and in gardening, in raising up to new life. God is always right there. We just need to get better at looking. God is always planting seeds, planting seeds of God's kingdom, and it's everywhere around us, and things are sprouting and growing to make God's kingdom happen. Young people are being gathered in, and as they are gathered in, they are, they are given eyes to see God's movement among us. They're seeing God in the world, and, and that's the growing of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is being planted among us as hungry people are being fed. The kingdom of God is sprouting and growing when people come together and they give of themselves for the sake of others, sometimes for people they don't even know. That's the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is planted and moving and growing among us when even in the midst of our grief and our sadness, we're still lifted up by the hope and the promise of new life that comes in Jesus Christ. That is the kingdom of God. Life being restored. That is the kingdom of God. 
Now, when we talk about kings or kingdoms, I, I'm sure in any other setting, a lot of ideas would pop into our heads about what kings and kingdoms could look like. We maybe think about castles or, or the large estate and the tall walls and the enclosed beautiful grounds and courtyard. We imagine wealth, lots and lots of wealth. And then there is the beautiful crown and jewels and glitz and glitter. We think of kings of old and all the power they had. They had the power to take things from others to build up their own kingdoms. But we're here for Christ the King. So we're not looking for those kinds of kings, not the kings of this world. We're looking towards Christ, our King. We're looking in different ways, maybe searching for that 40-year-old penny. We're looking for God's kingdom that maybe takes a new set of eyes or a different way of looking. Because God's kingdom does look different. Others mocked him. Others taunted him. Act like a king, Jesus. Save yourself. Put yourself first. That's what a king does. But Christ, our king, doesn't put himself first. Doesn't save himself. Doesn't cling to power. This king shows up in weakness. It's as weak as a gathering of confirmation kids who are still just starting to learn how to see God in the world. It's God showing up in weakness as weak as a family gathered together in their grief. This kind of God who shows up in weakness, this God who is God and human and friend, that's a different kind of king. A king that gives, a king that empties himself and pours out his whole life for our sake. And this Jesus, in the face of betrayal, he chose to forgive. Even the people who turned on him, even, even the people who put him on a cross, Jesus cries out, forgive them. This king doesn't come just for the best ones. This king comes for the ones who desperately need it. Jesus came for the ones who need God to come close. Jesus comes for the ones who are suffering, the ones who are dying, the ones who are miserable or lost or condemned to die. Jesus shows up even for the ones that everyone else says just aren't worth it. And Jesus says for them, today you will be with me in paradise. That's the kingdom that Jesus brings. And it's a very different kind of kingdom. But wherever people are being lifted up, wherever the hungry ones are fed, wherever generosity is poured out, the lost become found, and the dying find the hope of new life, wherever those things happen, that is the kingdom of God. And there, there is Christ, our King. Amen.
We are grateful for all of your generosity in supporting the ministries that we share together here at Fieldburg. We are able to try new things, reach out to young people, and serve in our community. For all of your generosity and the ministry that we share in the name of Christ, we join together in prayer. Blessed are you, maker of all things, as you have entrusted us with all that you have created. Now gather together our gifts. Nourish us at your holy table and send us to those who hunger and thirst. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. United in Christ with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world and for all who are in need. God who unites, work in your church to bring your people together. Lead denominations and faith-based groups to cooperate in creative and collaborative ministries that reach out to the world with the good news of Jesus Christ. God, our creator, protect and heal your beautiful creation. Grant all people and all creatures fresh water, clean air, a stable climate, and safe shelter. Guide us in careful stewardship of the air, the waters, and the land. Lord of the nations, change the hearts of people and leaders. Instill in us a deep desire for justice and peace for every child of earth. Build up and encourage the efforts of all who work for the health and joy of all people. God who lifts up and restores, renew us in body, mind, and spirit. Give hope to the grieving, empower those who are oppressed, heal the sick and the diseased, Send your light and your love wherever your children are hurting. We pray especially for those we name to you. Shower your grace on all who are in need. God who gives us courage, stir the people of this congregation. Make us bold to share the good news in our homes, our community, and our world. Give us joy as we tell of your kingdom that has come near. God, who is our future, make us confident to believe that we will join you in paradise. May the memory of the saints before us lead us onward until finally we are all made one in you. Accept all our prayers, gracious God, our spoken prayers and those known only to you. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray together in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The God of peace, who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus, and who breathes on us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace. Be a blessing to the world. Thanks be to God.